Hello, welcome to the session on postcolonial writing. Today we will deal with postcolonial poetry and to begin with we will start with uh, Walt Whitman's Beat Beat Drums. And you all are familiar with the name Walt Whitman. He is an American poet, highly influential American poet I should say and a key member of the Transcendentalist movement along with his contemporaries Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. These are the two people, uh, two foremost people who were part of this Transcendentalist movement. And Whitman, Whitman was one among the key members of Transcendentalism. And what is Transcendentalism? It's not actually quite important for you at this point of time and but um, till it is necessary uh, still it is necessary that you should know transcendentalism is an american literary philosophical religious and political movement of the early 19th century centered around ralph waldo emerson and transcendentalism is an idealistic system of thought based on a belief in the essential unity of all creation the innate goodness of humanity and the supreme insight over logic. Five predominant elements of transcendentalism are non-conformity, self-reliance, free thought, confidence and the importance of nature. So when you consider Whitman's poetry, you can see that uh, his poems are an amalgamation of all these elements we have just discussed. Now, Coming to the biography of the poet, Whitman was born on May 31st, 1819 in West Hills on Long Island, New York. He was the second son of Walter Whitman, uh, a house builder, and Louisa Van Velesor. His mother was Dutch and his father was of English descent. And in the 1980s and uh, 1920s and 30s, the family, which consisted of nine children, lived in Long Island and Brooklyn, where Whitman attended the Brooklyn public schools. Whitman's own love for America and its democracy can be at least partially attributed to his upbringing and his parents, who showed their own admiration for their country. That kind of patriotic fervor you can see in his poems came from that. And you can see that Whitman's younger brothers uh, were named after their favorite American heroes. Like, uh, for example, one of them uh, was termed as uh, George Washington Whitman, another one Thomas Jefferson, uh, then Andrew Jackson Whitman, uh, like that. Whitman worked as a printer in New York City under a devastating fire in the printing district did not demolish the industries. Uh, in 1836, at the age of 17, he, he began his career as a teacher in the one-room schoolhouses of Long Island. He continued to, uh, continued to teach until 1841 and later turned his career to uh, journalism. He founded a new weekly newspaper named The Long Islander and later edited a number of Brooklyn and New York papers including the Brooklyn Daily Eagle. In 1848, he became the editor of New Orleans Crescent for, and he worked there for three months. Later, he returned back to Brooklyn and co-founded uh, Free Soil, a newspaper. And uh, yeah, in 1855, of course, Whitman came out came with his uh, remarkable work, this Leaves of Grass, from which the poetry, the beat beat drums, has been taken. So, in 1855, Whitman took out a copyright on the first edition of Leaves of Grass and also he went on revising it till 1891 that you can see um, we'll discuss when we discuss the poetry and you can see the major works here Leaves of Grass, Drum Taps, Sequel to Drum Taps, then uh, Passage to India, My Fancy etc and Prose, Franklin Evans, Democratic Vistas, Memoranda During the War, Number Bows, Complete Prose Works etc. And you can see that Whitman has celebrated democracy, nature, love and friendship in his work Leaves of Grass. And he has been constantly revising it and adding few more poems uh, in all these years from 1852 to 1891. This monumental work chanted 
praises to the body as well as to the soul and found beauty and reassurance even in death because a couple of poems are about nature couple of uh, poems are about finding uh, one's own self that that transcendental element self reliance then this patriotic fervor whitman is perhaps america's first democratic poet he is termed as the first democratic poet or the bard of democracy the free verse he adopts in his works reflects a newly naturalized and accessible poetic language is over uh, reaching themes like the individual the nation the body soul um, everything actually uh, did wonders especially in his uh, book leaves of grass and he aimed to transcend traditional epics and uh, he tried to bring in new aesthetic forms to mirror the potential freedoms that is to be found in america Uh, Whitman, uh, not Whitman, like uh, Emerson once wrote about him, uh, like uh, I quote, the most extraordinary piece of wit and wisdom to come from an American pen. And uh, coming to the leaves of grass, it is uh, separated into thirty-five books. The majority of the twenty poems are in classical note. And uh, yeah, especially as I told you, it's about nature, soul, um, finding one's own self, etc. But there are certain poems um, especially dedicated um, to celebrate uh, patriotic fervor war etc etc beat beat drums and uh, vigil strains i kept on the field one night are two important poems among them as a transcendentalist poet whitman focuses on the beauty and innate harmony between the self society and nature throughout his highly esteemed collection of poetry leaves of grass With um, the leaves of grass, uh, as I mentioned, undergone a series of edits, reprints, rewriting, etc., almost six editions. Everything uh, in ev- all these things, he tried to uh, bring in a new element which actually favors his country or his nation or his self. So, okay, it was first uh, published on the um, this twenty um, eighth of September in eighteen sixty one. I mean. this poem then coming to the like yeah yeah coming to the poetry beat beat drums okay beat beat drums uh, got first published in 1861 and it got reprinted in the 1891 version the poem reflects that when a country is at war it is the people who suffer the most it also illustrates how it affects every sphere of society when you read the poem you will understand he talks about the farmer he talks about the uh, school children he talks about the common man who is sleeping in the streets every um, single person is being touched upon how war affects all of them beat beat drums by von whitman is a three stanza poem that employs no visible rhyme scheme beyond the work's tendency to begin each and every stanza with uh, the term this blow that is actually to create the effect of war the speaker narrates what happens to the people when a war breaks out he starts this piece with a command he issues instructions to beat the drums loudly that they disturb everybody's peace just like what transforms a society he wants the music to approach every corner of the state including the church uh, that means all those religious practices then school education house uh, that common household the court room uh, and the city full of traffic everything was affected he also describes how the loud sound cuts through the busy streets of the city it keeps people focused and drawing out the sound of singers shoppers conversations engaging encouraging the instrument to continue their jobs in every situation play um, and he is telling that play loudly um, he is asking the person who is beating the drum to play loudly and to shake the dead souls the poet also highlights the aftermath of the war then coming to the poem uh, when you um, so the uh, poetry in a nutshell Uh, talks about the effects of war and how uh, that is uh, especially this is being written in the context of american civil war so uh, when a, um, and this person is full of patriotic fervor so he of course he will be standing by his country his nation so he is telling the people to get ready that their nation is in a war and they should show the solidarity um, 
towards the war in order to protect their country. That you will understand from the three stanzas. So I'll read the first stanza and then I'll explain that and then we'll move on to the rest. So this is the first stanza that one given in this slide. Beat, beat, drums, blow, bugles, blow, through the windows, through doors, burst like a ruthless force into the solemn church and scatter the congregation into the school where the scholar is studying. Leave not the bridegroom quiet, no happiness must he have now with his bride, nor the peaceful farmer any peace, ploughing his field or gathering his grain. So fierce you whir and pound you, uh, you drums, so shrill your bugles blow. So this is full of onomatopoeic words and that actually uh, he deliberately, uh, deliberately puts in to show the effect of a war. So now you can understand that uh, the, this is kind of a, like a call or a kind of yeah call before the war. Beat, beat drums through the windows, through doors. Everything, every people should understand that okay their country is uh, going through such and such a situation. And that is why if there is any person who is being left out, who is unaware of the fact that something is happening to their country, they should know through the windows, through doors, burst like a ruthless force because uh, you should beat it again, uh, beat it hardly so that people will understand. So if uh, the, um, the square practice or mass is going on in the church, then also um, the people should be um, like kind of interrupted by the sound of this drums and that they should think about what is happening outside into the solemn church and scatter the congregation you should shoot the congregation and uh, say that okay this kind of war is coming into the school where the scholar is studying these are a kind of like institutions where a kind of discipline is being practiced whether it is a church or a uh, school no kind of uh, this loud noise or some uh, anything like that comes uh, from outside but when it happens they'll understand that there is something really alarming that is happening outside leave not the bridegroom quiet no happiness must he have now with his bride and even uh, in this uh, uh, the happy occasions where a couple is about to um, celebrate their um, like first day after a wedding uh, even though they shouldn't be left uh, free they shouldn't be left unaware of the facts that are happening outside then uh, they should also and also sometimes of course you know that the when the war uh, gets more and more um, what kind of it goes on like that the youth have to join youth of the country have to join the military force along with uh, the other um, the people who are in the army to, in order to save their country that was the kind of practices going on then so that means the um, what bridegroom is no can't sit quietly uh, with his wife anymore like okay now the peaceful farmer any peace plowing his field or gathering his grain even the uh, life of common man will be affected the farmer no longer can work peacefully in his plowing in his uh, field and also so fierce you wear and pound your drums so shrill you bugles blow so beat it hardly again and again so that the whole area um, um, and make the whole area tremble in the sound okay the use of drums bugles etc of this instrument actually uh, of course you know that all these instruments are being uh, used historically been linked to military orders and direction. The analysis of war effect on society begins with the second line of the stanza where you can see the terror of um, the people um, are um, this, uh, the, from the term the ruthless force that actually shows the terror of this military forces or the warfare. And also uh, the words um, you can't be away, stay away from the effects of battle. That is why not windows or doors that a common citizen might have to keep creatures and strangers at bay then regardless of these barriers of course they, we have to like uh, go on or each and every person will be affected that's why the example of church school etc and yeah the choice of the verb or is also with all uh, care he has taken because uh, burst means burst, um, like uh, the, you can find the whole effect of war from his words from the, from the thoughtful choice of words 
okay uh, because he shows the inevitability of war there and of course you should note the point that Whitman was never against the civil war because he stood by the country he had a kind of blind faith or patriotic fervor towards the America as a nation okay so he has a kind of uh, like yeah blind faith so he was never against the uh, war okay uh, then the kind of uh, the piece that people who used to get in the church that will be stolen and the, the kind of piece uh, the students small children used to celebrate in their celebrate or used to practice in their schools will be stolen everything will be will is going to change and even those who have reason to be content will suffer from the effects of the war as the music of battle continues now coming to the second stanza beat beat drums blow bugles blow so here you can see the use of a refrain that is the repetition of the same line uh, over and over then this over the traffic of cities over the rumble of wheels in the streets are beds prepared for sleepers at night in the houses no sleepers might must sleep in those beds no bargainers bargains by day no brokers or spec speculators would they continue would the talkers be talking would the singer attempt to sing would the lawyer rise in the court to state his case before the judge then rattle quicker heavier drums you bugles wilder blow wilder blow so now he is telling the it is actually giving again restating the actions uh, of the this drums and bugles by um, turning our attention to the battlefield again and again he prevents this reader from straying too far from the basic notions that is about to be faced by the country basic uh, factors okay that is the approaching uh, war social impact he is talking about the social impact or the societal impact of war and here over the traffic of cities uh, of course uh, busy traffic in, um, we are talking about US there will be busy traffic but the uh, drum beat, beat should be that loud that it should reach the um, reach every corner of the city despite of this busy traffic and he is asking uh, will the people of this uh, nation can sleep quietly at night in the house because their country is in danger country is facing some kind of danger will they sleep peacefully and he says that uh, all the um, actually uh, normal actions or the uh, society or the normal things that are happening in the society should be stopped for a while no bargainers bargains by the day no brokers or speculators would they continue he says that because uh, according to him every single person who belongs to the nation of america should be like kind of uh, what uh, kind of irritated or kind of being shocked by the fact that they are going to face a war so they, that means they at least they should stop their normal activities that are going around whether it is in the marketplace or somewhere else they should stop for a while think about their nation and think about the approaching danger would the talkers be talking would the singer attempt to sing so that is by that he says that wouldn't the normal life of the society will be affected once uh, the yeah will be once the war starts of course the all these people will be affected would the lawyer rise in the court to state his case before the judge even the functioning of the court might be affected and then rattle quicker heavier drums you bugles wind a blow but until despite of any situation we can't stop uh, the war because we need to protect our country we need to keep our country in a peaceful state so we need to go on the second line actually starts the stanza begins in a similar format of the first stanza because it shows the um, impact of war over the society by talking about the uh, this what traffic over the cities and the voy loud voice of this uh, what drums and also he tries um, to reinforce the this um, kind of war by the words like over through etc etc it is over our heads and suspended above us it is like some kind of danger is uh, sus uh, suspended above us and also uh, he is yeah mm, as we all 
see towards the end of the stanza he says that whatever be the situation uh, you can't uh, back out from the war um, you should make the people aware of that okay we should we need to face this okay now coming to the third stanza beat beat drums blow bugles blow refrain again make no parley one second beat beat drums blow bugles blow make no parley stop for no expostulation mind not the timid mind not the weeper or prayer mind not the old men beseeching the young man let not the child's voice be heard nor the mother's entreaties then make even the trestles to shake the dead where they lie awaiting the hearses so strong you thump o terrible drums so loud you bugle bugles blow so that is the third stanza and here actually he whitman brings the reader back to that central focus of drums that beat and uh, the bugles that blow because that refrain is being um, brought in again by the Uh, line beat beat drums blow bugles blow but once that area of concentration is re established he foresees the perspective of the pitiful common men and country men to uh, instead embolden the war that is plaguing the land he makes the command to those war instruments uh, to make parley or no or stop because you know uh, he says that you shouldn't stop at any instance because being a nation being a patriotic nation you shouldn't uh, stop at, uh, at any context mind not the timid mind not the weeper or prayer mind not the old man beseeching the young man because uh, if someone is crying over the situation of the country then mind not because now the country is important not the uh, person okay so and also not the persons uh, prayers or weeping there will be um, this like uh, what crying people but don't focus them there will be weeping people no fo- uh, don't focus them there will be people praying for the end of war don't focus over them then yeah uh, yeah and this mind not the old man beseeching the young man and there will be uh, these older people who are being like uh, what affected by the war a lot uh, don't consider them because at this point of time we can't consider their um, situation because our country is important let not the child's voice be heard nor the mother's entre- entreaties and there will be crying children around because when there is a political unrest in a country or there is a civil war the children and the women will be the most affected they will become homeless they will become refugees or anything can happen their men will be out in the war they can be like uh, yeah um, uh, anything can happen to them and of course they live in utter poverty all these things will happen but um, in this uh, situation we have uh, no way to like, stop the war so we need to move on then make even the trestles to shake the dead where they lie awaiting the hearses so strong you thump o terrible drums so loud your bugles blow so at any cost you shouldn't stop the war you need to move on and uh, make the people understand that the war is inevitable that is and for the uh, well being of our nation so that is what he says in this poem and of course he makes um, as i mentioned earlier and the, the statements like the weeper or the prayer the old man beseeching the young man the child mother all those actually you should ignore all these things uh, means 
these all these categories can be considered as irrelevant pieces because uh, the war equation is greater because of the situation in this country. This difference in the atmosphere of the poem seems to mirror war at its cruelest level. Some critics say like that because we can't glorify war at any instance, but that is being done here. That it is, it pities no one and offers no comfort as the terrible drums, terrible drums play on. There is worth nothing that in final stanza there seems to be a reference to families, especially the kind of worries they will be going through in the civil war period. Then uh, this bad and child relationships, so that will be in distress, of course. And, of course, you can see that the humanity within the poem seems to dwindle from the first answer to the last, from problems that can be addressed with certainty to issues that can only be presumed, and on to a prevalence of war concerns that outweigh the notion of compassion and human care altogether. Through the, uh, this perspective, Whitman has given a viewpoint of war that could be clear that it affects everything and that it can effectively take our very humanity from us. That is what he tries to prove. And uh, yeah, that is the um, kind of analysis we can make. So you saw that uh, many people of the church and many others are being affected. And in the second stanza, the poem asks questions like beds are prepared for sleepers, talkers, because every single thing should be affected. Then speakers' preoccupation with the idea that the sounds of war are impacting everyone continues to grow through these questions. And of course, the music of war, he calls, increases the drums play heavier and the bugles wilder blow. The instrumentation signals the intensity of war that could take the consequences of war. Huh, yeah, uh, the consequences of war to much harsher levels. And in coming to the final stanza, as we have already discussed, the poetry um, in the po uh, final stanza of the poem, the poet speaks again about the force of the sound of drums and bugles and their inability to stop for anything or anyone. Uh, uh, the term uh, the um, poetic term he uses is the stop for no ex expostulation and these are some of the phrases important phrases that are given there and uh, so under all these circumstances you shouldn't actually listen to the cry of any people around because uh, war is inevitable at this point of time so the sounds of war must go on and nothing to uh, should stop it so this is all about the poem and uh, you can find uh, quite a lot of uh, literary devices that are being used. A refrain we have already mentioned, Onametupuya we have already mentioned. Then we have this uh, this um, assonance, alliteration, um, etc. And uh, consonance, etc. Okay, so I hope everything is clear. Uh, thank you.